Welcome to chapter 14. This is about refraction and our first section here is on what refraction is. So what we're going to do today is we are going to recognize situations where refraction will occur. We'll identify which direction light bends when it passes from one medium to another and we're going to solve problems using Snell's law. So first I want you to think how are rainbows formed? Because it turns out that rainbows are formed through a process called refraction. So what happens, okay, is refraction is just the bending of light as it travels from one medium to another, but it turns out it depends on wavelength. Okay. So light, white light, remember, is a combination of all the different colors. And so each wave bends a different amount as it goes through a rain droplet. And what you see then is all the different colors reflecting back at you uh, because they refracted through the rain droplets. Okay, refraction is also what causes things like a pencil and a cup or a straw and a clear glass of water okay, to look like it doesn't line up. So what happens is you've got the angle of incidence here, and we measure this from the normal line, and then you have the angle of refraction, the angle that it changes based on the medium. So refraction happens as light travels between air and other transparent mediums, or really between any two transparent mediums. Okay. And as we mentioned before in the previous chapter, the speed of light will change slightly as it changes medium. And this causes the effects like we see in rainbows, like we just discussed, and when a straw in a glass doesn't look straight. So how can we figure out how much the light will bend as it goes into a different medium? Well, what we use is something called the index of refraction. Okay, and this index of refraction, we use the letter N here. Okay, and it just means that it's the ratio of the speed of light, okay, compared to the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, so the speed of the light in the medium and the speed of the light in the vacuum. Because it's always going to be faster in a vacuum, our index of refraction will always be greater than 1. So as we look at our index of refraction, if an object moves from a lower index of refraction to a higher index of refraction, so you can imagine this is our medium, okay, and it's going from a lower one, so maybe this is n equals 1 to n equals 1.3, Okay. and we have our normal line here at 90 degrees. Okay. Then the angle measured from the normal will decrease from the incident ray to the reflected ray. So what that means is if this light comes in this way, it's going to come out like this. So that this angle here, we're going to call that the second angle, and this is the first angle. Okay. So the first angle for angle 1 will be greater than angle 2. Okay, so we've got n1 and n2. Now if we switch that around, okay, the opposite is true as well. So if instead now we have n equals 1.3 is our n1 and our n2 is 1.0, okay, then the opposite will happen. So we've got our normal line, okay, and this will come in here and then it's going to bend greater, okay. So this angle and this angle theta 2 and theta 1, theta 1 will now be less than theta 2. Okay. So we can always tell how whether it will bend more or less depending on how the indices of refraction compare. So one thing that this also ends up telling us is that when we're looking into water and we see an object, the object isn't where it looks like because the light is bending as it goes through. So here we've got a cat who's eyeing a fish, and the cat sees the fish as though it's in a straight line. Okay, but really that light has bent. So because the index of refraction of water is greater, or excuse me, of air is greater than of water, okay, then what you get is this angle here ends up being smaller than this angle there. And so the fish is closer to the cat than it appears. The fish sees the opposite, though, because their indices of refraction are reversed now. The fish is seeing the light traveling from the air to the water. So the angle here ends up being smaller because this index of refraction is bigger than this index of refraction. So objects always appear to be in different positions if you're looking through a medium 
because of refraction. So one thing that we can use to calculate exactly what that angle is is called Snell's Law. So Snell's Law just tells us that the indice of refraction of the first medium times the sine of the angle of incidence will equal the angle of, excuse me, the index of refraction of the second medium times the angle of refraction in that second medium. So here are the eyes, this is the light coming in, right? So this here, the angle of incidence is I, and this here, our angle of refraction is R. So this is Ni, and this is Nr. So let's do an example problem with this now. So we are going to find the angle of refraction for a ray of light entering a bucket, this should say bucket, not a buck, a bucket of water, where the N of 1.33 from air at an angle of 25 degrees to the normal. So it turns out the N of air is almost always 1, okay, because it's really close to a vacuum. It doesn't really slow down the speed of uh, light very much. But water slows it down a bit more, so our N of the water is 1.33. So it's going from air to water. So this one is going to be our, our incidence, and this is going to be our refraction, okay? So Snell Law tells us that we've got the index of refraction times the sine of the angle of incidence will equal the index of refraction of our refracted ray times the sine of our refracted angle. Okay. So the light enters the bucket of water from the air at an angle of 25. Because it says enters from that means that that is our incident angle, so theta i will equal 25. So now we can go ahead and plug in our information. Okay, n air is our i, and n water is our refraction, so we're going to have 1 times the sine of 25 equals 1.33 times the sine of theta r. If we rearrange this to solve now, 1 times sine 25 stays sine 25, and we're going to need to divide by 1.33. So we'll have sine 25 divided by 1.33 equals the sine of theta r. Whoops, sorry, not theta squared, theta r. Okay, and here, if you guys aren't familiar with this, the opposite of the sine function here is called sine inverse. So I'm going to take the sine inverse of both sides. So I'm going to have the sine inverse. And the button looks just like this on your calculator. It has that little negative 1. And then in that, I'm going to put my sine of 25 over 1.33. And this will be my angle of refraction. So if I plug this in now, my angle theta r. Um, make sure, just before we solve this, make sure this is, this is 25 degrees. So make sure your calculator is set in degree mode, okay? It's really important or you'll get the wrong answer. So after we plug that in then, we will find that our angle of refraction is 18, whoops, 18 point...